Okay, so next up on stage, we have a couple of young, new Europeans. We have uh, Maria Spirova. Spie, Spie, Did I say that right? She's nodding. Okay, and uh, Raluca and Eslu. And here they are. He messed up the easier name. Hello, fellow European citizens. Raluca and I are here today as members of an organization, an excellent organization called the New Europeans. We've been lobbying, we've been campaigning for nobody to be left behind by Brexit. But there's more. Raluca is from Romania, I'm from Bulgaria. You are standing in the presence of the very beasts that brought you Brexit. We were portrayed by Mr. Farage, Mrs. May and Mr. Cameron as the barbarians coming to your shores from the farthest reaches of Europe to pick up your crops, give medicines to your elderly people and fix your IT systems. Are you afraid? Here we are. Indeed, I cannot blame everybody who took up this rhetoric. It was incessant and many British people, in fact, know no better. The history of our region really does read like a deleted chapter from the Game of Thrones. And if I may take this metaphor further and this stereotype, because after four years, I'm okay with it. If you want me to be a barbarian, I'll be a barbarian. So, what's happening is the following. We, we, Raluca and I, we're the wildlings. We're coming from beyond the wall, the Berlin Wall. And we're here to tell you, winter is coming. The white walkers are real and some of them are in Westminster. There has been a lot said about why me and mine have, um, have immigrated to this country. Nobody ever asked me or anybody like me. So let me tell you, I didn't come here for money. Take it, I swear to you, I didn't come here for money. Do you know what, I came here because of something that I think has charmed and impressed the world about Britain for many, many years. I came here to learn because this is what civilization is. People migrating to learn from each other. I do something for you, you do something for me, give and take. And I came here to learn from two classic British values, common sense and fair play. I love common sense and fair play. And it broke my heart, I must tell you, it broke my heart that my coming here made so many Brits lose sight of these values. Is it fair play for a government to dishonor me and everybody like me, to demonize me, to lie, to cook statistics, to suppress reports and portray me and mine like people who are parasites while the truth could be nothing further from this. Is it common sense? Thank you. Is it common sense to ruin the economy for the sake of borders. Borders are made up, people. Everybody in Europe knows this. This is why we move them from side to side, especially our part of, the, of Europe, every so often. Because they are made up. People have different ideas about them all the time. So I'm here today to say thank you to everybody who made this country a great place for us to live. Many like me love this country. This is our home and we're here today not to fight against Brexit, because Brexit is made up just like borders. It's not a real thing. What's real is Britain. I'm not here to fight against Brexit. I'm here to fight for my neighbors who are British. I'm here to fight for Britain. I will tell you a big secret. Britain needs the EU as much as Bulgaria needs the EU, as much as Romania needs the EU, as much as Poland, Hungary, France need the EU. And this is why, this is why the government you have now wants us out of the EU. Because the EU 
is what citizens of every nation in Europe have when they have a government that goes rogue. You can always, always escalate. If something is going wrong, if your local police, if your local courts are not respecting your rights, if they're poisoning your air, if they're taking away your benefits or your labor rights, you know where to go for that. Because if some government goes raw, they're rogue, there are other governments and other nations across Europe who remember what it is, we more than you, clearly, what it is to have a government you cannot trust. If there is one thing, because we've come here and we've learned a lot from Britain and from the British, and if there is one thing you should learn from us Eastern Europeans is that governments can and often do go rogue. And if you let them carry on for long enough, then it is too late. And Raluca and I know exactly what too late looks like. This is why we have to stand together and we have to do it now. Now is the time. We don't have any time and we still have the EU on our side. <sighs> coming here, coming here today, I passed by the Polish War Cemetery. And I thought about these people and all the British soldiers buried across the fields of Europe. Europe was built on their bones. These people died so that the people on this island and on the continent never hate, distrust and oppose each other again. Now is not the time to forget this. Now is not the time to be soft. It is because of our dead, it is because of the living, and is because of the, all those who shall come after us, British, Northern Irish, Irish, Continental, and the permutations thereof, because we intermarry now, you know, it's allowed. It is because of them that all of us here today remember that you cannot take Europe out of Britain, and you cannot take Britain out of Europe. Thank you. Had a look up. Yeah. Killed her. Hi, everyone. I'm Raluca. I'm a European citizen from Romania. I'm the migrant that Nigel Farage has warned you about. There you go. You can see me. You know, those Romanians coming over here, working in your charities, speaking at your rallies. Yeah, so in Romania, like Maria, my colleague, said, we have had our own fair share of rogue governments, so I'm no stranger to protest. We have had our own governments who won slim majorities through bold-faced lies and populist rhetoric, then called it a mandate to do whatever they like. Have you seen this before anywhere? Yeah, sounds familiar? Yeah. But when the Romanian government uh, tried to pass a law to give amnesty to the crook who stole from the public purse. Do you know what we did? Did you see it on the news? We took to the streets and we protested every single day for more than two weeks. In Bucharest, we had, uh, had 300,000 people marching. That was one-sixth of the city's population. In Sibiu, a city of uh, about 150,000 people, we had 20,000 people marching on the street. And you know what happened? Then, when they saw us, they started to back down. Yeah, and I remember very, very fondly um, in, 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 in Victory Square in Bucharest, tens, and, uh, yeah, tens of thousands of people, just like here, filling the square, 
and they all took their lighters and flashlight out of their pockets, raised them up, and in the middle of the Victory Square in Bucharest, they created a big, magnificent EU flag. Because we are Europeans and we will not be standing for this. We will not stand for our rights being violated. When our government wanted to sell a beautiful, unique, archaeologically irreplaceable village to a Canadian mining company to be raised to the ground and turned into a wasteland with cyanide mining, we took to the streets and we protested. It took us years, but we saved our village. We did it. When, a be when our beloved concert venue, uh, the Club Collective, burned to the ground, with killing dozens of people inside it because our local authorities did not care for our safety. You know, just like it happened here with the Greenfell Tower. We remember collective, we remember the Greenfell Tower. You know what we did then? We took to the streets and we protested until we forced our prime minister to resign. Yeah, we did it. And, and if we did it in Romania, we can do it here in Britain. Yeah, we can do it. I've seen it happen. No. I used to think, no, I used to think that Brits don't really protest as much as Romanians do. And I thought that was a good thing, you know? No, it, it was a good thing because you know, we're, we're supposed to be this stable, uh, established democracy where you don't really need to go to the street with placards and chance to make a political point because, you know, in an established democracy, you write to your MP and that solves things and the opposition actually opposes and all the nice things. Yeah, but now we do. Now we protest just as much as Romanians because now things are actually so bad that they have to. And I'm immensely, immensely grateful to all of you beautiful people right here in the square uh, taking part in the March for Europe. No, this is how change happens. You give me hope. And this is why I have joined New Europeans and this is why I've been campaigning with them for a long time. This is why, and you know, I see right in front of me Julie Ward, MEP, who helped us out with that. This is why just uh, last month I was in Strasbourg with my colleagues from New Europeans uh, talking to MEPs from multiple, like several EU countries and uh, asking them, urging them to protect our rights. And I don't just mean our rights as EU citizens uh, who built lives here in the UK and who found community here. I also very much mean for our British friends across the EU whose rights are now under attack because this government is willing to sell them out to satisfy their populist rhetoric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there is one thing that I want to share with you that uh, from the Romanian um, protests uh, uh, against corruption, one thing that I want you all to take home today and learn one expression in Romanian today. Uniți salvăm. United we save. United we save our communities. United we save uh, our democracy. And united we save Europe. No, this is because we are, we are Europeans. This is what we do. United, we say, join. If you join New Europeans as member, if you join our campaigns, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And let's organize together. And I promise you, as New Europeans, we will fight for uh, our. We will fight for your rights. No, we are European, and united, we save. Unit Salvam. Thank you.